Okay, on this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the different kinds of masks in Procreate. So there are three different types. There's alpha lock, which is the easiest and quickest form. There's clipping mask and there's layer mask. So for example, if you had a really simple shape like this egg and you wanted to add some lighting and some shading to it, but you're worried about going over the edges and just keeping it really neat, then you can use the masks to your advantage. Now the easiest way of doing that would be to go to the layer that you have your shape on, tap on that layer and also tap on alpha lock. You'll notice in the background where the shape is previewed here, you've got a little checkerboard pattern. So that means it's gonna ignore anything outside of where the main shape is. So for example, we can now switch our colors. So we've got this nice brown color here, but we'll go for something a bit lighter. We've got a color on the air, the end there, that will do. Go to our brushes. We'll choose something with a bit more texture. We'll start with something subtle. So I'm gonna go for the hard rain texture with an element. And I'm just gonna start testing that now. And when we zoom in, you can see that it's applying it just to the edge, but it doesn't really go beyond it. So it's a really perfect way of just adding the shading or highlights without going over the very edge. And you can do the same with a dark color. So we're still on the same layer. So I'm gonna to go to a darker yellow brown and I can do exactly the same on another edge. And you can see even more clearly on this side that it's contained within the shape and doesn't extend beyond those edges. And you can keep playing around with this. It's so quick and easy and you don't have to worry about being neat. If you're not happy with it, you can just keep alternating. And honestly, it's a great time-saving device and it just gets rid of any of that anxiety around having to be super neat with it. You can just keep playing around with it until you're absolutely happy with the overall finish. Try some lighter colors for some highlights and so on. And you never have to worry about extending beyond the actual edges. And we'll just add a little bit of a secondary light there as well. And obviously it's just like normal layers. So if you put something underneath it and you go in there with a shadow, it's just gonna respect everything above it. So you don't need to worry at all about the way it interacts with anything else. So that's the simplest way of using masks to help you with your edges, but there are other ways. Now, the reasons why you might want to use a different method is because that initial layer now is stuck with that kind of lighting on there. There's not a lot you can do to it. You've already progressed so far on that layer and if you decide that you want to amend it well it's kind of too late you'd have to do the undo button to go backwards and backwards and backwards to get to the point where you could amend an earlier mistake or change something fundamental about it so for little changes you're happy and you're absolutely confident that you're not going to want to undo it then it's fine but i'll show you the next method which is clipping mask so we're back to the original shape we'll create a layer above the original shape tap on that layer's properties and you can see now we've got the addition of clipping mask. We tap on that and it then links it to the shape underneath. You can see a little arrow and that basically means it's attached itself to the original layer. So that is the most important one, the original shape. Anything you add to this one now is not going to extend beyond the parameters and I'll show you that just really dramatically with a dark color like black. Put it up to 100% and if I go across there you can see it only adds things to the inside of that shape, even though it's on a completely new layer, which means that if you need to go back to that original shape, you can just untick it or delete that the layer, and then it goes straight back to there. I'm gonna clear that layer and start again. So it's still attached to that original layer, but we're gonna try and recreate what we did before. So I'll start with the dark shading this time, and we can start to add some of that dark shading. Again, it's on a separate layer. We don't have to be precious around the edges. Can really go for it and again it is on a separate layer and then the beauty of this is that we can add another layer tap on that new layer again and also try the clipping mask and again a little arrow appears and it further links it to that original layer so now on that second layer we can try some highlights we'll go for a lighter color and start adding some of this in and you can see the shadow and the highlights are on separate layers but they are still only working within the parameters of that egg shape and then we could create another layer, tap it, clipping mask it. Again, it's linked and go for an even lighter color. And then maybe just reduce the size of that and just get some highlight in there, a bit of sheen. And just like we did previously, maybe add a little bit of a secondary light source coming in there just to give it a bit more 3D-ness. And we can create another layer, put this underneath everything and create a bit of a shadow. So it's totally non-destructive to that original shape. 
and you can remove any of the adjustments and you can revert back to that at any point. So it's a really good method for trying out all sorts of new things without destroying that original element. And the last method is the layer mask. So very simply, when you tap on the original shapes layer, and then you've got mask, and you can see it opens a new layer above it, and it's highlighted to it, you can see it's connected. And this allows you to remove and put back in parts of the original shape. So for example, this is an egg. If I wanted to perhaps just experiment with a crack and create like a broken look for the egg. So currently, it's not obscuring anything that's there, so it's pure white. So in its original form, it's not altered it and it remains white. So we need to go to another color. So we'll go to pure black and we'll go to a brush where it's gonna be really crisp. So we'll go to the hard brush with an airbrushing, set it to an appropriate size. And now you can see I can start removing bits of that egg. And again, everything that I did on the other layers was linked to this original shape. And now we're telling those layers that that original shape has had something removed. So it's really great because all those extra layers with shading and highlights also disappear along with this shape. So it's perfect. And we'll just create our crooked edge for our broken egg like that. And if we just go to the background layer and another layer, we can go back to our colors and then maybe we could add something of the background area, the internal part of the egg, just to give it that believability like so. Now, if we decide that actually we've made a bit of an error there and we want to either add bits more of the shape back in or revert it back to normal, we can go to that layer, go to a pure white this time, and then we can just start adding the white to that layer with the brush and it starts to revert bits of that original shape back in. So you can kind of reconstruct it, which is really cool. And you can do that as much as you want, just like that. Just as another really quite cool thing you can do, as well as adding just textures and shading and those kind of things, you can create another layer. Again, it's clipped and attached to that original shape. And we've got the shading and the kind of boring elements, but why not have a bit of fun? You can go to some different patterns. We've got this flower power one, choose a color, and you can just start adding some different shapes to that. And it, again, it's going to obey the edge of that shape. And it's also going to respect the shading and the different elements that you've added on top. So you can have quite a bit of fun with the clipping mask with basic things like shading, but textures, but also patterns too. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Please check out my other videos. I've got other Procreate tutorials and actual painting tutorials as well. Give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and also the bell notification. Thanks for watching, see you soon.